Davis Wade Stadium, Starkville, Mississippi on the campus of Mississippi State. Grass is green, looks great, it's ready for the year, not painted yet. In less than a month, you're gonna have game number one, Mississippi State hosting Louisiana Tech. Wyatt's got the ball, Wyatt back to throw, Wyatt look, Wyatt's more the end zone. Pass for touchdown by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler. This video is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank, Land Bank, where they understand the lay of the land. Check them out at mslandbank.com. Let's take just a second, do a little preview, learn about Louisiana Tech football before they come running out here on September the 4th. Last year's Louisiana Tech team, 2020, they were five and five. Now they won some close games, they lost some blowouts, including their bowl game against Georgia Southern. They just got run out of the building. But last year was a COVID year, and coming into the year, their best defensive front player, Willie Baker, who was going to be a senior in 2020, he went ahead and opted out. Now he's back this year, we'll talk about that. Then as the year went on, two things popped up for them. Opt-outs happened progressively throughout the year. Their left tackle, some others, uh, a receiver. And then their quarterback got hurt with a few games left in the season and was out. So it was really an odd year for them. They didn't have much experience coming back anyway, so they struggled. LaTeX wins last year were uh, a one-point win at Southern Miss, a blowout over Houston Baptist, then a one-score win over UTEP, a double overtime win by a field goal over UAB, and then they win by 11 at North Texas. Their losses, they got blown out by BYU, they got blown out by Marshall, they lost to UTSA by one point, then they got blown out by TCU at the end of the year and embarrassed in their bowl game. So their losses were bad, some of their wins were close, they were right there, they scratched and clawed to get to five and five, and that's what good programs do, and they've played in a lot of bowl games recently, so the fact is they have a good program and Skip Holtz knows what he's doing. Start with the offense, we'll start right there. Up front is sort of the key for them. They didn't have much of a run game last year, they couldn't get it going. As you said, you know, they had an opt-out at one tackle at one point in the year. They played five different offensive tackles at, at, at some point in the year. So there wasn't a lot of continuity up front. They couldn't run the ball. Speaking of quarterbacks for Louisiana Tech, you might have noticed I actually posted this video and then came back, deleted it, and I'm, I'm making an adjustment because I got a little bit in a hurry on the first one and didn't realize that there is another quarterback in the mix. So Luke Anthony transferred to La Tech a couple of years ago from Abilene Christian. And he's actually played here in this stadium at Davis Wade before. He started in 2019 for Abilene Christian against Mississippi State. He was La Tech starter last year. And then uh, at the end of the year against TCU, he got a broken leg. As it turns out, that leg didn't necessarily heal up the way they wanted it to as quickly. And I think the coaching staff was a little iffy on betting completely on him being their guy the whole way going forward. So they brought in a transfer from West Virginia, Austin Kendall. Austin Kendall started his career at Oklahoma. He was a, a backup to Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray at uh, Oklahoma. Then he was a backup to Jalen Hurts, so he transferred to West Virginia. Started his first year at West Virginia, and then last year, in 2020, didn't win the starting job. Became a backup. It was his final year. At the end of the year, though, he came into the bowl game for West Virginia uh, as a backup and led them to a big come-from-behind win over Army. Well, he thought he was done. He went and got a job. He was on a salary. He had a company computer, and La Tech and Skip Holtz called him brought him in for a visit and talked him into playing one more year, a sixth year as a super senior. And so Austin Kendall, the former Oklahoma, former West Virginia quarterback, does appear to be maybe the guy who will lead their offense when they come in here to uh, Davis Wade Stadium in 21 days from today, the day that I'm actually uh, filming this. So the quarterback position may be um, something to keep an eye on. He's a former four-star recruit. He's an older guy. This will be his third school. Can Austin Kendall make a difference for that offense? Again, I think it starts for them up front. And while they have some experience back, they do lose one key piece. And that is a guy transferred out. He was a three-time Conference USA, All-Conference USA player, Cody Russey, their longtime solid starting center. So Russey was the center part of their defense for or their offense, excuse me, their offensive line for three years. Uh, three-time All-Conference USA. Played in some of these big non-conference games. Nice job against the nose of LSU right there. Later in the run, 
Get that butt around, keep your balance, make a few yards. He was a good player. They're going to miss him. With a year of eligibility left, didn't stick around to play this year in the middle of that offensive line. He transferred to Houston, so they're going to have to break in a new center, and he was a big piece and played a lot of football for them, and as you mentioned, a three-time all-conference player. So they'll build the offensive line around somebody else, not him. They always play with a chip on their shoulder, and it's understandable, right, because they've always got – one, two, three NFL guys on their roster who were overlooked in recruiting. So they're good, they're well coached, and uh, they'll play mad just a little bit, especially on the road in an SEC stadium. The other thing is they add a running back transfer with a lot of experience. Marcus Williams transferred from App State, Appalachian State, to Louisiana Tech. And, you know, he hasn't had a thousand yard season yet. Pistol formation at App State. Now the colors on your screen, this is what happens when you don't adjust the white balance of a camera. But you can see what happens. Anyway, it gets a nice block. Safety had an angle on him. Now you thought, but he's actually just going to smooth outrun him to the next level. Safety never even gets close to getting there. And it's head on the goal post. He's 5'10", 210. He's a pretty productive uh, guy, you know. He's a, a need for that offense to have an experienced guy. Quick, make a miss to the next level. Good running backs do that, right? You know, they make that first guy miss. Now, what you would certainly say right here is, uh, I don't know this player, this is, if you're showing film of what not to do, this is what not to do when trying to make a tackle. You know, he split time while at App State, but he was very productive, very consistently. I think it's like three straight seasons with a little over 500 yards rushing and several touchdowns. So, you know, he's an experienced guy, older guy, immediately comes in. You watch his film. He knows what he's doing. He's tough to tackle. And so it's a piece that they add to their offense that they really needed. Here you go again, springing it to the next level through contact and um, you know, run through contact again at the 10. Yeah, so... A little bit of a look at what they'll face if he's healthy. Another running back transfer that's in the mix uh, this year at Louisiana Tech actually trans transferred in from the SEC, and that's Keon Henry Brooks from Vanderbilt. He played in 2019 and 20 at Vandy, so freshman, sophomore. He's technically still just a sophomore because of last year's eligibility waiver for everybody in the country. And it's a, a good back. He was Vanderbilt's leading rusher in 2020. 61207 from Powder Springs, Georgia. He played and started against Mississippi State for Vandy in Davis Wade Stadium last year, but it will all sort of make or break depending on that offensive line, just like it did last year. And now let's look at Louisiana Tech's defense because I think this is where they really are, are very interesting and could make a big jump potentially in 2021. Again, you go back to last season, Willie Baker was returning for his senior season. He led them in tackles for loss like the previous two years. And then coming into the year because of COVID, he opted out. So they played without him all of last year. He's back, a Louisiana guy, very experienced, super senior. La Tech had a really good linebacker group and they were actually led by a freshman, Tyler Grubbs. 6'1", 224 out of New Orleans, went to Holy Cross. And um, he, he was really good a year ago, listed as a Freshman All-American by the Football Writers Association, also by ESPN. When you watch his film, you know, he started all 10 games, um, had at least nine tackles in eight of the 10 ball games that he played in last year, led the team last year as a freshman with 99 tackles, and he is a missile. Plays the run really well. He is shot out of a cannon, very aggressive. Um, you didn't see him in coverage a ton. I mean, he made plays in coverage, very solid, but he really flashes against the run. Um, he, he does not get uh, juked, shaken. He is a sure tackler, and he's a really good player and coming into his second year in college. So look for number 52, Tyler Grubbs, linebacker, 6'1", 224. They are deep in the secondary. Last year they were coming into the year, they didn't have a ton of experience coming into that year, but because of playing all those young guys, kind of like Mississippi State's defense, they come back this year, they are experienced in the secondary and their best player really maybe on their team may be in that secondary as well a guy named bj williamson who wears number four plays safety for them bj williamson lining up in the slot over a slot receiver but they're gonna actually go a little zone coverage on this and make him the flat defender 
Let me see how they use him. So, like right there, quarterback rolling his way. It's zone dropping corners. Out there is his zone. They send a receiver, but like he senses, I got somebody coming also to the other side. So he just kind of settles right in that intermediate, thinking, you know, we either take away a route, I make a tackle. If I don't, if they complete it underneath, I try to make a tackle. So they're, you know, putting the ball or, or putting him in a bind, two in his area, but he made the right decision, just totally fell off in front of that receiver. Quarterback never sees him, throws it right to him for a pick. He's a good athlete. You know, and uh, made some big plays for them. Got run down right here by a receiver. Didn't quite get it into the end zone. Uh, I think this is a UAB game. He had another interception in there. Nice job coming up tackling. You see him playing that slot receiver a bunch. Williamson was a first-team Conference USA player. Uh, a couple of picks. He's a very active safety. Uh, he tackles well, comes up, tackles well. And that'll be a key matchup in the game because, you know, State's going to like if they can get certain guys in the slot matched up on him to kind of single him up and really challenge him in this ball game, they add a couple of depth pieces and maybe even talent pieces that they didn't have in their secondary in the transfer portal from the SEC. Balen Buchanan, there he is. He's playing corner for Tennessee and uh, coming off the edge right here. Got a tight end in the back to his side. And so he's the eighth guy in the box, just flying there, make a tackle. He's a tough kid, you know. He, you could tell he's not huge, but he'd stick his nose in there. You know, you can watch him on film. He had plays that he made against Alabama and uh, Missouri and other SEC teams. Play around the line of scrimmage, kind of getting a nickel position here for Tennessee. Coming off the edge against Alabama, Jalen Hurts got his hands up. Uh, I said nickel position right here. So you, you saw what Tennessee did. They rotate one down on top to show man. And now he's coming off the edge, right? So uh, just watch him here. You're gonna fly in there, get your hands up in front of the quarterback. Got a hand on it and uh, turned it into an interception. Now, this is a blowout of a game already. And this guy's in the NFL and he's a great player, and great teammate, but <laughs> Hurts right here. Uh, didn't really want a whole lot of this tackling business. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> he just sort of, He's there, but that's about it. Guy tackled well. He created some turnovers in his time at Tennessee, and he has transferred in there and is scheduled to, uh, at least according to everything you read, be a starter in that secondary for Louisiana Tech. Here he is against Missouri. Come up physical, make a tackle, rake the ball out of there, create a turnover. So they add him into this Louisiana Tech defense, and he should definitely be good for them. Buchanan is 5'11", 195 pounds, so he kind of slots as a corner for them and whether he's a field corner or a boundary corner just know that you know if he's healthy and ready to go he's an sec guy with sec experience and is not going to bat an eye at stepping into davis wade stadium and playing against that air raid offense they also added a transfer from arkansas miles mason who played a bunch of snaps over the last few years at arkansas he was there for three years his third year last year he drew his first start or two i can't remember exactly how many but you know, played well, had a lot of tackles in games against Ole Miss and LSU. So an Arkansas transfer, a Tennessee transfer in that Louisiana Tech secondary in a group that already had some depth. So Holtz and that staff really feel like they have a better chance to be consistent throughout the year on the back end of their defense. Louisiana Tech is loaded with transfers this year in 2021 that are really gonna impact their team, make their team look a little different. You start with the defensive back, Balaam Buchanan, who transferred in out of Tennessee. You got the running back Marcus Williams uh, from Appalachian State who will factor into that position. You have the uh, DB transfer out of Vanderbilt, Elijah Hamilton. The DB transfer out of Arkansas, Miles Mason. Uh, Keon Henry Brooks, the running back transfer out of Vanderbilt. Then uh, obviously the quarterback uh, via Oklahoma, then West Virginia, Austin Kendall that we talked about. And then finally, Kelton Hollins, an offensive lineman out of TCU, played some guard at TCU, also played a little center, and he may be in the mix to uh, fill those shoes at center. So seven key transfers from other FBS schools this year for Louisiana Tech. It's going to be one and loss in the line of scrimmage like most games. This will be a line of scrimmage deal where I think Mississippi State has a big advantage. They, State really has advantages all over the field. State's gonna have advantages but La Tech, I do think, going to be a better football team overall than they were a year ago. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of a preview of opponent 
number one for Mississippi State. Like that monkey who sat his tail on a railroad track. It won't be long now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.